By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have the finals for you from the Constructed Fallen Empires Tournament. If you've missed some of the earlier games, you can click on the link that's appearing right now. That will take you to the playlist. For now, we're going to look at the finals and we have Gideon with his, oh no, not Thala deck. It's mono green versus the visible hand from Yoop and that is mono white. So we've got two mono color decks in the finals. I guess that says something about Fallen Empires and how to construct the best possible Fallen Empire decks. We've seen a lot of mono brews, obviously then have the most consistency. Um, so we are going to look at the finals. Before I continue, uh, I just want to mention, if you want to go straight to the games, you can click on the timestamp below. That'll take you straight to game number one. Uh, for here, as always, I am going to start with um, the deck tech, and I'm going to start by looking at the deck of Yoop, the visible hand. And here we go. This is the visible hand and this is being played by Yoop, the mono white player. Um, as you can see, there's a full playset of Hand of Justices in this deck. And I can tell you Hand of Justice in a Fallen Empires only environment is just huge. It's a 2-6 creature. 6 toughness means it's almost impossible to get rid of. Remember, you don't have instant removal in this set. You don't have terror, you don't have swords. Uh, it's just really, really difficult. You don't have counterspell. It's really hard to deal with with Hand of Justice just as a creature. And then of course it has this magnificent ability where you tap Hand of Justice and you tap three other white creatures to destroy target creatures. So it's it's creature removal in a format that hardly has any. So it's extremely powerful and it could be the decider today. Um, then for the rest, we see a lot of smaller creature, Ecation Infantry, Ecation Javelineers, Order of Lightbur. Uh, we see Ecation Priest, which could kind of play a role maybe in late game using all those planes you see at the bottom to pump all the creatures. I mean, you never know. These these Fallen Empire um, matches have a tendency to take long to really take you into mid game, late game. And there, an Ecation Priest can be surprisingly strong. Talking about surprisingly strong, I believe the Combat Medic could be crucial in this matchup as well. It's one white and two to cast. It's an O2 creature. And for one white and one, you can prevent damage. And, um, you know, when you're playing against a deck with, for example, Thorn Tally, that can deal one damage to any target when you remove three uh, uh, Suprol encounters, you can actually um, use the Combat Medic to kind of cancel that effect out. So that would mean that the Thali player has to wait three whole turns just to deal one measly point of damage. And then the Combat Medic can kind of cancel that out with just uh, uh, paying one white mana and one. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that is going to work against each other. So how big is the role of the Combat Medic going to be? Now, of course, we also see the IO piles. We're I've seen that in every single deck, including that of my own. It is the kind of... Um, removal that you kind of need in the form of the best removal that you can have two to cast one in sack deal two damage to any target colorless damage so that means you don't have to worry about any protection or any colors you can just uh, kill whatever you want but of course it only deals two damage so again uh, when you're facing a card like hand of justice or a Daralore or you know any of the other bigger creatures in fallen empires io pile is not really going to help you that much uh, the last two cards I'd like to point out in this deck are the two Ring of Renewals. Ring of Renewal is five to cast, uh, then five and tap. And you have to discard a card and then you can draw two cards. Now this in itself may not sound very powerful, but again in Fallen Empires only, I think it's a very powerful artifact and it could be actually decisive. When, when the game gets dragged into late game, uh, you know, card advantage can be crucial. And I, I, I feel like using this, and a, a nice little thing, if you don't know, is when you tap the Ring of Renewal and you have to discard a card but your hand is empty, you actually don't have to discard anything. So then you can just draw two cards for five, which is actually not too bad. So curious to see Ring of Renewal and Action Combat Medic synergies going on here, and of course see if Hand of Justice is going to be decisive. Those will be the three cards that I will be looking at specifically in the finals from the deck of you, the visible hand. Now let's take a look at the deck of Gideon. Oh no, not Thalets. And here we see the deck of Gideon, a completely Thalet based deck and mono green. So we're going to see the finals between mono white taking on mono green. Let's take a look at this deck. Um, I think Fungal Bloom is going to be extremely powerful. It's an enchantment for two green. And for two green, you can put a uh, spore counter 
on a target fungus and remember all this works with spore counter so a phthalate for example just it's a one one creature for one green uh, you put a spore counter on there you during the upkeep you remove three spore counters and you get a one one sprawling so uh, the fungal bloom can kind of accelerate that and put even more spore counters on there but when it gets really interesting is when he also has a spore flower in the game so spore flower is an oh one creature for two green and every turn again you put a spore counter on it remove three spore counters and you don't get a saproling but you get a fog effect so nothing deals any damage no combat damage i should say is being dealt so with fungal bloom you can kind of build this your own fog machine and you can stall the game so long until you have enough little one one saproling tokens or until you can ping your opponent to death with for example the thorn tally thorn tally is not a creature that's quite interesting two green and one to cast it's a two two during your upkeep you can put a spore counter on it remove three spore counters and it deals one damage to any target so again this can be really really strong another card that's interesting to zoom into is the um, thelonite druid so thelonite druid is one green and two and you can see it there in between the thorn tally and the uh, feral tally and it's a 1-1 one, one, uh, summon cleric and for one green and one you can tap it then you need to sacrifice a creature and then all your forests become two three creatures so two three that's like really really strong two three creatures how cool is that so that means that um he can sack like a 1-1 one, one, uh, saproling token who cares and then he has a, a an army of forests attacking the opponent so that can be quite powerful um, the last card I'd like to point out here, which I think is quite interesting, is Spore Cloud. Now, Spore Cloud is another fog effect, two green, one, and creatures don't deal any damage in combat, but it has something added to it. What it does as well is all the creatures that are attacking uh, do not untap during their next untap phase. So that means that they don't deal any damage, but they also stay tapped. So that could be a perfect moment uh, for Gideon to kind of open up the board so he can lure his opponent into an attack use the spore cloud all the creatures will remain tapped and kind of get a free charge uh, moment there maybe using his fell knight druid for example to trample over him with with two three fours so those are some of the cards that i'm going to look at uh, it's very interesting i think the thali deck is um, a much more a grindy deck and um, a, a danger here for Gideon that i can see is that he wants to to stall the game as long as possible uh, you know with his fog effects spore flowers spore clouds all that stuff and then he he might get into trouble because he's allowing Yoop to draw into his hand of justice and then being able to kill everything on the other hand um if if Gideon succeeds in just getting a lot of tokens on the board and putting or putting putting some pressure on he could really trample literally trample over over his opponents so over the wide deck so i possibly i definitely see possibilities here for this thali deck to take uh the win here and actually take the tournament here uh because this is the finals so let's um let's go and check out let's see what's going to happen here with white against green we've got soldiers versus thalids let's go to the games Game number one of the finals of the Fallen Empires Tournament Constructed Cup. So we've got Yoop on the left with his Mono White, the Visible Hand Brew, against Gideon on the right with his, oh no, not Thalet's Mono Green Brew. And we see a nice Ecation Javelin here, here by Yoop hitting the board, attacking now, turn two, playing an Order of Light Burr. And there we see a Fungal Bloom from Gideon. So this is that powerful enchantment I talked about in the deck deck section could be decisive the problem here is that Gideon is under a lot of pressure already and there we see an Ecation Javelin here and another order of Light Burr and things are not looking great for Gideon there's just so much pressure on the board he needs to find a way to get out of this pressure maybe a Spore Cloud next turn if you would attack with everything and he's going to play something look like looks like it's the Thalonite Druid actually it looks like he's in doubt still changing his mind changing it to a thalid a 1-1 one, one green creature and the iopile so iopile is great here because it can just take care of one of the creatures and interesting to see that he's played out that thalid because it looks very vulnerable with those ecation javelineers and exactly that's what Yub does taking out one of the taking out the thalid i guess so there are no more creatures on the board for heal and there is a feral's zealot and an attack now for five. Gideon's dropping to 11. 
And let's see what he can do. There's just so much pressure. Of course, he's got the IO pile to take care of one of the creatures. Okay, this is looking more like it. Drawing another IO pile. So next turn, he's able to take care of two of the creatures. And taking care of both of the orders of Lightbur. And another Feral Zealot. So another 2-2 two -two body here. And look at Gideon's life total already on 7. And it's just going really, really quickly here, playing a Night Soil, and Night Soil is an enchantment for two green. You can pay one, remove two, two creatures from the same graveyard to get a 1-1, one, one, and you can do that with your opponent's graveyard as well. There is an Ecasian Priest. So he's going to attack for five now. And using the Night Soil to create a creature, being able to block one at least. Maybe just blocking a 2-2, although Yup can also respond by using his Javelinier counter. And he's actually not going to block. Or he is blocking, but he's on 3 now at least. Okay, and that's it. Yeah, Gideon doesn't see a way out of this anymore. So this first game went pretty quickly. A lot of aggression here uh, by Yup. And of course, I said before that a lot of these games... Uh, go and 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 you're going to be dragged into mid game late game. Well, this game definitely did not. This was a really quick game, one up for you here. And let's let these players sideboard, and we'll catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game number two in the finals of the Fallen Empires Constructed Tournament. Yup is one game up. That means if he wins the second game, he has won the tournament. But we're not there yet. Gideon has a fighting chance still. Opening up with a Thalet, the 1-1 one, one creature. And there's an Ecation Infantry from uh, Yup. And in the upkeep, Gideon can place a Spore Counter on the Thalet. And when he takes three Spore Counters off, he gets a 1-1 one, one Saproling. And there we see the Fungal Bloom. And the Fungal Bloom is a really strong enchantment. The only thing is, Gideon will need to have time. And the question is, is Yup going to give him that time? There's already an Order of Light Burr on his side of the table. Thalet taking up now to Spore Counter number two. And there is a Thorn Talet. This is quite interesting because with three Spore Counters on the Thorn Talet, you can deal one damage to any target. So in combination with the Fungal Bloom, he can start mowing down those little creatures of Yup. But again, he needs time and he needs lands. So he's got three lands now. So maybe next turn when he gets a second forest, he can put two Spore Counters on his Thorn Talet plus the one he gets in the upkeep and he'll be able to remove one of those Order of Light Birds. There's a second one being played by Yupir, so he, he's really trying to keep the pressure on the board. He knows that he, he mustn't give Gideon time to build up his ridiculous Thalate army and Spore Cloud shenanigans. So he's trying to just attack and play as aggressive as possible. As possible. Aye, bad turn here for Gideon. He seems to be missing his land drop here. And especially with that Fungal Bloom on the table, you want to have another Forest, because that would mean you can put two Spore Counters on one of your uh, Funguses instead of just one. Attacking here for five, also attacking with the Ecation Infantry. That's quite interesting. And look at that. Yup is playing a, or, sorry, Hideon is playing a Spore Cloud. That means that all the creatures that were attacking and blocking are tapped and remain tapped for the next turn. So in this case, uh, Yup's complete army will stay tapped for another go. And maybe this is just a space that Gideon needed. Playing a Night Soil here, attacking here, swinging in for five. Uh, four, sorry, dropping to 16. And Yup finding another land, tapping five, Ring of Renewal. So this could be interesting, although I think it's a little bit too slow for this moment. And there we see the Thorn Tally ticking up to three with that Fungal Bloom and shooting down that order of light burr attacking again dealing four more damage he's dropping to 12 and he can use the fungal bloom again to destroy the last order of light burr if he wants to with that thorn talent and there's a combat medic and combat medic can start preventing the damage so in response Gideon is putting two more counters on the thorn talent and shooting down the last order of light burr i think that's a very good play and uh, that combat medic could be very annoying for Gideon, but at least for now, it only looks like it's going to be annoying because, I mean, he is still pretty much in the lead here. There's an attack with the Ecasian Infantry. That means that Gideon's dropping to 16. And it makes sense to attack now, by the way, because uh, you can just use those two mana to prevent the damage. Attacking now with everything he has, 
So Gideon going in for the attack. And let's see, Yub is probably going to block... Um, Oh, he's actually not going to block, which makes sense, because if he blocks, then there is an opening here maybe for Gideon to use his Thorn Talon in, in a way. I'm actually not quite sure if he did block. Anyway, he's playing a Thalonite Druid, and that is quite interesting, because the Thalonite Druid is a 1-1 one, one creature for 1 green and 1. You can sacrifice a creature and make all your forests into 2-3 creatures. And there's an Ecation Javelinier by uh, Yoop, and that Ikation Javelin here actually is pretty annoying for Gideon because it can take down the Thalit at least, stopping their production. And there are now three Soprolings that, that the, you see the dice on the green card, those are the Soproling tokens of Gideon, and he's got one Spore Counter on his Thalit and two Spore Counters on his um, Thorn Thalit. Look at this, playing two creatures, a Spore Flower and an Elvish Farmer. Interesting choice here. Uh, attacking for three. And I'm saying interesting choice because maybe I would have chosen to just or play Spore Flower or play Elvish Farmer. Um, and now we're going to see some blocking. It's a little bit hard to follow. I think he gives the Ecation Javelinier first strike and he also blocks with the, or the Ecation Infantry first strike, blocking with the Ecation Javelinier and preventing the damage with the Combat Matic. That means that Gideon is just losing uh some suprolings and that's it so that's not a very successful attack for him and there you can kind of see the strength of the combat medic and there's another occasion javelin here and uh it's going to be interesting to see it it, it, it still does look like i mean yup is fine fighting back and he's doing all that he can but it just looks like Gideon simply has too much going on over there on that side of the table you know when you're playing against a Thalate player and you keep seeing more and more dice and counters it's not a good sign and I have to admit it's it's kind of hard to commentate because there's so much so much happening I think I wonder if Gideon is now going to sack one of his creatures with the Thalonite Druid and attack with the two three lands I think that's what he's going to do tapping two green tapping the Thalonite Sacking probably one of his Soprolings. Oh, sacking him, sacking the Druid himself. That's interesting. And choosing to attack with three, two, three lands, um, the two one, one creatures. So he just really wants to deal as much damage as possible here. I guess he's also a little bit afraid of uh, finding maybe a Hand of Justice next turn. So he wants to make sure that uh, Yup doesn't have three creatures anymore on the board, three white creatures. Let's see how he's going to block. Remember, he can still prevent two damage with the combat medic, but he can also use the Ecation Infantry, for example. You can pay one to give him banding um, or one to give, give him first strike. And of course, he's got the Ecation Javelineers so that he can still tap to deal one damage with the Javelin counter. So it's a very complicated uh, combat situation. And it looks like he's just going to block one and let's see which one did he block it's pretty unclear and it looks like he's just going to let the rest of the damage he's just going to take the rest of the damage blocking the phthalate killing the phthalate preventing two damage that means that um Gideon manages to push in four damage interesting to see here is that Yup is not using his Ecation Javelineers because he could have chosen to block, tap, and deal a damage to a target. Um, actually, he is, end of turn, deciding to kill a creature. It's kind of difficult to follow here, actually. But anyway, when all the dust is settled, I guess, the conclusion is that Yup is on five and he's lost two creatures. And there's the Hand of Justice. Ooh, and he's missing one creature. He needs... One more white creature, and now, remember, uh, Yup has is tapped out, so that means that he cannot use the combat medic to prevent any damage. So, let's see if Gideon's going to take advantage with this with his Thorn Talit, taking it up to three with the Fungal Bloom, removing the three counters to kill. Is he then going to use it? Uh, we see now that Yup is killing the Fungal Bloom with the occasion. Javelinier, and he's now taking out the three counters to kill the Ecation Javelinier, so I guess that tap was in response to that. 
Uh, and that mean that's really important for Gideon here, just to keep the amount of white creatures really low on the side of, of Yup, because uh, Yup needs three white creatures to start using that Hand of Justice, and that could be terrible for Gideon. But it's really difficult for Gideon with those combat medics on the on the battlefield. They're O2 creatures, and for one white and one, you can prevent the damage. So it's 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 quite an interesting game actually. Because, you know, Gideon knows if next turn you is able to, to play out another creature and he has that Ring of Renewal to kind of dig for creatures as well. And uh, Gideon played the Thelonite Druid past turn. And, um, yeah, this is interesting. They're actually looking up to try to see, like, when you're turning them into lands... I believe, uh, or they considered uh, creatures or what's actually happening. Well, they're actually colorless two, three creatures. And there's an IO pile hitting the board, but not a creature. Ooh, able to kill the Thorn Talit. I think that's a really good decision here from Yoop. Is he actually going to pull through here? The problem, of course, for, uh, for Yoop is if he could have played a creature now as well to kill the Thalonite Druid, that would, have been, that would have been golden because now I think Hedon can sack, exactly use his Thalonite Druid, sack a Suproling, and just attack with everything he has. And I think he's going to make it, to be honest, because it's 4 one ones and 4 2 3 creatures. I don't think that Yoop can survive this. He's only on 5. He can block three forests and he still takes six. No, that's it. That's it. That means it's 1-1 one, one, and that means we're going to game number three. This is exciting. Game number three. This is going to be the decider. Whoever wins this game can crown himself the Fallen Empire Guru. So let's take a look. Who's going to win this tournament? There is Yup starting off with an Ekajian Infantry. And Gideon just with a forest passing turn here, so no one drop for him. That means some early pressure for Yup here and finding an Ecasian priest. But not a second planes. Ooh, that's kind of rough here for Yup. And there's an IO pile by Gideon. And attacking here for two, finding planes at least, playing his land number two. Gideon dropping to 17. And let's see, is Yup going to play out something? Yes, he is. There's an Order of Light Burst. So that means this kind of reminds me of game number one where Yup was able to put on a lot of early pressure on Gideon. And, you know, when you're a Thali player, you want some space. Look at that. No land drop from Gideon. And there is a Spore Cloud. This is very important. This is going to buy Gideon hopefully some time to get back into this. Remember, Spore Cloud... Um, is a, is not just a fog effect. It also says that the creatures that attacked or blocked do not untap the next turn. So that means those three creatures on Yup's side of the battlefield are going to remain tapped. There we see a spore flower and another IO pile. So Gideon is slowly getting back into this, being able to remove two creatures next turn. But there we also see a Veral Sea Lot from the side of Yup. So he's now got five creatures on the battlefield. That's quite a lot here. And there we see a Thalid from Gideon in past turn. So... It's going to be interesting to see what he's going to do in the next combat uh, step. I think he has to destroy the Feral's Zealot. Another Spore Cloud. Spore Cloud number two here. And uh, he's actually also blocking the Feral's Zealot, I think, because the thing is with Feral's Zealot, even if it doesn't deal damage, the thing is if it's unblocked, it can deal three damage to tar target creature. So I think Gideon decided to block Feral's Zealot, then play the Spore Cloud, which is a pretty good move, actually. And there's an IO pile on the side of Yoop. And of course, the creatures don't untap because of the Spore Cloud. And he's also cast that Ecasian Priest. Or no, that was already on the battlefield. And there is the Thorn Talon, the 2-2 attacking now, being destroyed by the Io Pile. It's really a creature that you wants to get rid of ASAP because it can start mowing down uh, the creatures, his, uh, his soldiers. And there's another Thorn Talon now cast by Gideon. So the problem remains here for you, but of course with the Cajun Priest, he can pump his creatures. And there we see the Spore Flower taking off the three uh, counters to create that fog effect. So that means no combat damage is dealt. So it's really difficult for Yup now to kind of get through and deal damage 
to Gideon at this stage of the game. Of course, Gideon doesn't have a fungal bloom yet, and um, that is kind of uh, good news for, for Yupp, I guess, because as soon as Gideon can grab that fungal bloom, he can start ha uh, getting his fog machine online with the, uh, with the spore flower. There's another spore cloud, spore cloud number three, I believe, of this game. Amazing. There's a hand of justice by you, Pierre, and hand of justice. That is a big problem for Gideon. What can he do against hand of justice? Does have two IO piles for four damage, but maybe it's better to use the IO piles to start mowing down some of the troops. But then again, Yup has five creatures. He can kill two of them. Then he still has three white creatures and his hand of justice. So he still has his hand online. Only one card in hand. Casting it now with Feral Thalet. Hmm. This is not looking great. Oh, of course, the creatures remain tapped because of the Spore Cloud. I forgot about that. But he's also finding an Ecasian Infantry. So that's his white creature number three. That means that any moment now, he can start tapping that Hand of Justice and killing some creatures on the side of Gideon. But he can do that as a fast effect. So no need to do it in, on his turn. He can simply wait and do it at the end step of Gideon. Or he can wait until he attacks and then decides what he wants to do. And I think the Thorn Talent will probably be his first target. And this is interesting. What is Gideon going to do? Maybe declare attack first? Remember, he has the two Io piles. Ah, of course, he also has the Occasion Priest that he can use to bump his creatures as well. Ay, 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 ay. Occasion Priest, you can pay two white and one, I believe, and you give target creature plus one, plus one. Now, he has seven mana, eight mana, if he wants to sack his Runes of Troikar. But let's say he's got six, so he can give plus two, plus two in, in, in total to one or to two creatures, any way he wants to. And now we're at the end step, I guess, because they see you tapping down his Hand of Justice and the three white creatures. And what is he going to kill first? I guess that's the question now. And uh, he's killing down the big Feral Thalet. And uh, now Gideon is trying to kill one of the one ones, but in response, Yup activate his Ecasian Priest. And now he's activating his Io Pile to at least get rid of a creature. Now taking the uh, Order of Lightbur. Using the other one, this is all happening at the end step, killing the other order of Lightbird. But it's it's actually bad news here for Gideon, and I think he knows it because he has to kill more creatures. He has to make sure that the Hand of Justice is turned offline because right now he still has four white creatures and the Hand of Justice. There's white creature number five hitting the battlefield. Th things are looking grim here for Gideon in the finals of the Constructed Fallen Empires Tournament. Old school players have been fighting for this trophy for weeks and uh, this is a decisive match and it looks like Visible Hand is taking the victory here but of course we're not there yet but that Hand of Justice is looking mighty strong and step we saw a really quick tap of the Hand of Justice destroying that Thorn Talet and uh, that means that Gidon only has two Suprolling tokens a Spore Flower that he's activating now just to make sure he doesn't get any damage and a Thalet and there is a Balm of Restoration hitting the table. It's a nice card. I believe it's even on the restricted list. But it's not going to change anything here for Gideon. And there goes the Spore Flower destroyed by the Hand of Justice. Attacking with Feral Sealot. And uh, he's kind of forced to Charm Block. I guess he might as well have used the Suprolling. Remember, um, it makes little sense for Gideon to double block and try to kill the Feral Seal because of the Ecation Priest that's in play as well. And uh, attacking now with actually three creatures. Interesting, so that probably means that Yupa is going to play another white creature in the second main phase. And let's see how Gideon is going to block. I don't think there's much for him to do. Only one card in hand. Even if it's a Spore Cloud, um, it's not really going to save him here. 
It is actually a Spore Cloud. Okay, I believe that Spore Cloud number four uh, that Gideon is playing. So full play set of Spore Clouds. That's what we're seeing here in the finals of the uh, Constructed Fallen Empires tournament. And two Ekajian infantries here by uh, by Yoop. So that means he can kill one more Soproling. That's exactly what he does at the end step. He's not tapping. It's probably just saying it to Gideon. Passing turn here, drawing a card. I mean, it's it's close to impossible for Gideon now to uh, to take this match. So it looks like the visible hand of Yoop is winning here, is going to take the trophy and the title of being the Fallen Empire Guru. And there's an Ikashian Phalanx. I really love the art of this card, by the way. Two for banning, and there's a Thali Devourer. I must say it's um, admirable how uh, Gideon is trying to... Uh, to keep fighting, doesn't want to surrender. He doesn't just want to give the victory away. And uh, there's the attack. And Yoop is still playing very disciplined, keeping his three untapped creatures on the hand of justice on the side, just in case. Attacking now for six, eight damage in total, using the Balm of Restoration. And uh, he's dropping down to two, playing a Thorn Talate. And of course, it's being killed instantly by the Hand of Justice. And I guess in this game number three, we could finally see how incredibly powerful the Hand of Justice is. And uh, that's it. That's the victory here for Yoop. Congratulations. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well done, man. Well done. Um, you've won this tournament. Uh, thank you for watching uh, this match and maybe you've already also seen the other matches. Uh, it was a really fun tournament. Uh, I really enjoyed organizing this. It's nice to see, you know, a set of Fallen Empires uh, getting getting some renewed attention. And uh, it was a cool tournament. Congratulations to, uh, to Yoop for uh, winning it. And uh, th thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, if you like this and if you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a sub. If you're not a subscriber yet, leave a comment, leave a like. All that helps. And of course, share this beautiful final on your socials and share your love for Fallen Empires uh, with us here by leaving a comment. Let me know if you think that the visible hand is the right champion or if in your opinion, another color or color combination in Fallen Empires is actually stronger than mono white do you for example believe that the thralls of mono black are stronger or maybe a combination of colors let me know curious to hear from you um you can also support the channel on patreon by the way before i forget we have a patreon page there's a link popping up right now you can click on that link um, and you can visit the Patreon page and consider becoming a patron of Timmy Talks, supporting the channel Timmy Talks financially as well. Talking about the patrons, let's take a look at our fantastic, incredibly lovely, beautiful patrons that actually made this tournament possible. Let's go to the end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee.